landscape of Dalriada has been through a rough time. The rocks have been battered and boiled, scraped by ice and scoured by floods. People have had a go as well, but now it boasts some of Scotland's finest scenery and hosts precious wildlife, spectacular evidence of early settlers, a fort marking the early days of Scotland and a unique canal. More than 500 million years ago, what is now Scotland lay south of the equator, separated from England by the Iapetus Ocean. Thick layers of sandstone and limestone were laid down in warm, shallow seas, while volcanoes spewed out sheets of lava. When the Iapetus Ocean closed, Scotland collided with England and the rocks and sediment layers were heated and compressed. This created the contorted Dalradian rocks that take their name from Dalriada, a land ruled by settlers from Ireland 1,500 years ago. Scotland and England drifted northwards towards the cooler latitudes of today. But over the last two million years, the climate has varied enormously and Scotland was often buried by thick ice sheets and glaciers. The last of the ice sheets started life on what is now Rannoch Moor and flowed into Loch Awe, where the land had been gouged out by earlier glaciers. As the climate warmed, meltwater from the shrinking ice sheet poured through Kilmartin Glen. The sediments it deposited formed the fertile soil that now covers the flat valley floor. The weight of ice covering the land made it sink deeper into the Earth's crust. Then, as the ice melted, low-lying areas of land were flooded because sea levels rose faster than the land could bounce back. However, the sea left its mark very clearly. The raised beaches you can see today, flanking the valley floors, show exactly where the ancient coastline lay. Once the glaciers had melted, the landscape was slowly colonised by mosses and lichens. The climate kept getting warmer and sedges, grasses and dwarf willows began to cover the land. These pioneer species paved the way for the native woodlands of birch, hazel, oak and elm, which you can still see and enjoy in Knapdale and Combarton Glen. The first people arrived by boats about 8,000 years ago because travel over land was difficult and dangerous. They were attracted to this area because the forests, rivers and sea offered shelter, fuel and plentiful food. They could also watch for other incomers from the rocky heights near the coast. Later people built forts there. The only traces of these early visitors are the small shell middens, animal bones and stone tools found in caves along the coast. These hunter-gatherers belonged to the Middle Stone Age and had little impact on the landscape because they were largely nomadic. It was the new Stone Age settlers that cleared areas of woodland to entice wild animals to graze within a spear's throw and to grow early types of grain for bread. However, over the following centuries, greater human activity and the effect of a cooling climate meant that the woodlands continued to get smaller. The earliest monuments found in Camarton Glen are about 5,000 years old. When we see their mysterious cup and ring carvings in the rocks, the imposing avenues of standing stones and the inspiring stone circles which are still in place, it's obvious that these first settlers were a highly sophisticated people with potent beliefs and compelling rituals. The cool, wet climate at that time was ideal for the formation of peat, which is composed of damp, compressed and partly decayed vegetation. The Moine Vor, the Great Moss, is a huge raised bog designated as a National Nature Reserve because it's home to many special plants and insects. Grains of pollen captured in the layers of peat give us a fascinating and detailed record of the plants that have lived here during the last 5,000 years. Settlers called Scots from the Kingdom of Dalriada in the north of Ireland, arrived here more than 1,500 years ago. They added this area to their kingdom and also brought their Celtic church beliefs and rituals with them. The Scots built a fort at Danad, 
the rocky outcrop that has views over the whole of Carmarthen Glen. It was here they crowned their kings who would eventually take over the Pictish territory and become rulers of what is now Scotland. Over time, these settlers with their Irish roots built chapels and simple houses and raised cattle and sheep. A thousand years ago, in medieval times, arable farming became more extensive and people built clusters of small buildings around patchworks of irregular fields. Farming flourished and became more intensive in the late 1700s when agricultural improvements and new machines meant farmers could reclaim the fertile clays that lay beneath the Moyne of Ore. When the peat was cleared for farming and used for fuel, the area prospered and other trades and businesses began to develop. A major boost for the economy was the construction of the Crinan Canal which opened in 1801. This shortcut for vessels sailing between the River Clyde and Highland and Island ports brought more prosperity to the area. Coal and manufactured goods went north, slate and herring came south, but many travellers used passenger services and later day trips from Glasgow became very popular. Forestry on an industrial scale created the most recent dramatic changes in the landscape of what we still call Dalriada. After both world wars, the government ordered huge tracts of land to be planted with conifer trees to replace timber used in the wars. Many of the men and women who worked with the Forestry Commission lived in new villages and developed a powerful community spirit as they planted, managed and later felled the trees. Their rectangular blocks of spruce, fir and pine replace many of the ancient oak forests, but now the tide is turning. Ancient woodlands, particularly in Knapdale, are being regenerated. They are vital to the ecology of the area because they are home to native tree species and many rare plants and animals. For this reason, the woods at Tainish are now a national nature reserve. So what is the future for this special landscape? The focus on commercial forestry has given way to a more integrated approach to the natural environment, where tourism, recreation and the conservation of landscape, woodland and wildlife sit alongside agriculture and forestry. That's what makes Dalriada tick today, but the picture is always changing and we all have a part to play. We are once again learning to work in partnership with nature in order to achieve a sustainable future. But we have to cope with the uncertainties of climate change and its impact on our natural surroundings. The intertwined story of this land and the people who have made it their home is truly fascinating. We greatly value our inheritance from past times and people and we hope that future generations will regard favourably the contribution we are making to sustaining that legacy.